ba ba da da. Hello, everybody. My name is Rodgon. I am an artist, a designer, an illustrator, cartoonist, graphic designer, and everything in between. And today we will be drawing together. So grab your sketchbooks and grab a pencil, grab a pen, and let us learn a little lesson today about torsos. Torsos. I think that's how you spell it. Torsos is more a line of what the rib cage and the hip bone. Yay! Along with the spine and everything like that. So that is what we're going to be going over today. I personally have been wanting to do one of this topic for a while, mostly because I want to see how far I've gotten with my studies. And I want to see if I can actually apply that to an understanding and teachable way so that I can, you know, further along the line, be able to teach it to other people. All right. So the torso and the rib cage, the rib cage consists of the torso and the hip bone. The rib cage is going to be where all your heart and all your organs are inside. And then the hip bone is normally considered your pelvic bowl where all your organs sit on this bone. All the other little organs, all the squishy stuff sits on top of this bone. And that is what's holding all your organs there. If you never realize that. <laughs> so we have two hard surfaces. We have the rib cage. And then we have another hard surface. In our hip bone. And then the other thing that is like hard and not like movable really is the spine. But that's in the back. So you don't see that. So the main parts that do not squish or distort in our, you know, body's like midsection is the rib cage and the hip bone. Everything else goes in between those. So if you think about these two elements being connected with uh little ligaments or like uh, rubber bands, you can start making connections that start breaking down your design how you require it, right? Without adding too much anatomy, and we're going to walk through like the little tiny steps that I normally take in order to like get the things in the right spots. So, you know, make sure to take notes. Uh, these are things that honestly took a long time for me to realize. And, you know, these are like the little clicky moments that I have developed. So hopefully these little clicky moment um, lessons will help you guys out. And if you guys want to be like the extra most helpful people in the world, why don't you guys post that I'm going live? And then that would help me let other people know as well. That is one thing that you guys can do to help me while you guys watch. Because I normally always forget to uh, notify people. <laughs> All right. So... How do we start even drawing this? How do we even start figuring out what the torso is, right? So the torso is going to be the midsection for most uh, animals and most humans, really. They're going to have a rib cage and they're going to have hips. So be it a human, we're going to make a human and an animal on the other side. And we're going to follow the exact same procedures. Hip bone, hip bone. Rib cage, rib cage. Be it a nice, handsome, ha ha, gallant man of a 
of a dude or be it a bear they're both going to have very similar adaptable knots to their anatomy so they're learning just how to draw rib cages and how to draw hip bones is going to help you immensely when you want to uh, progress into drawing things. Uh, I am sorry uh, that true and runway model, as cute as you look in your profile picture, I'm not going to go in and do any lives with you. Um, I'm teaching a lesson. And once I start the lesson, that's it. There's, you guys are stuck. You guys either want to learn or you guys can leave. <laughs> that simple. But uh, I normally don't take uh, any lives or interruptions. And I hardly ever look at the comments too because I'm just constantly drawing. So whenever I do look at the comments, uh, it's normally towards the end and whenever we like. Uh, we're learning about torsos today. Uh, Harrison Perry, Perry, what are we learning today? Uh, that's what we're doing. So we're going to learn how like rib, rib bones. Uh, okay, I'm just going to turn off invites for the whole thing because you guys, I don't care if you're a cute girl. I'm not going to interrupt my shit. That's right now. That's more important. Okay, so we have the best way to start is the simplest way that I learned how. If you want to draw a really nice torso, Learn how to draw a bean bag. A little bean. And what do I mean by a bean? One side is going to be relatively straight. One side is going to have a little bumpy part with a little crease in the middle. Okay? If you can do this shape, then you should be able to divide this in halves. Relatively easy. Right? This is just basic perspective, basic and basic perspective. So I'm pretty sure all of you can draw this. Well, if you can draw this, you can probably subdivide this one more time pretty easy, right? And I'm tracing the other side of the the shape too, just a simple, you know, following through. I'm pretty sure that you can draw that too. So now from there, it doesn't take much to make it into a really good torso. All we got to do is find this little dimp in the front of the body. And we already have the shape of the rib cage with this first little dimple right here. So we have that and we just find the middle, which we already drew in the middle. So we just map those out going to one side, going to the other. And now you have your rib cage. That simple. To get the collarbone, you just go up this line that you drew for the middle, and the collarbone goes towards the middle of your body. So you just go to those lines. Without much needing of understanding, you have just created a nice cool rib cage. You can just if you wanted to trace the other side of it, like okay, if you're drawing like a robot or something like that, right? All you got to do is follow these lines that you already drew into where the back connects. And now you have a rib cage going into perspective, right? This is like the back part of the rib cage. When we go down the body, just give it underwear. <laughs> Just give it undies, like a thong. And that makes it fun, too, like because you like start thinking that you're giving your character underwear. But just give it underwear. And the underwear, if we have just the beanbag right now, is going to wrap around and open up your hip bones. Right? So the openings for your underwear are going to be your hip bone uh, guidelines. 
That's where your legs are going to come out of. So now we have, we went from a little bean bag to dividing it into very simply just drawing two quick elements and we created a cool torso. Now to this, you know, you would have to add a head. a neck, and other elements to be able to complete it. But it would have you like 20% out the door right there. Already knowing where your shoulders would be. If you want it to be a girl or a boy, all you got to do from that point on is just taper this in or break it out. So... It provides you like a gigantic uh, stepping stone to creating the rest of your character. Uh, Sadie Mall says, have you thought about teaching on Udemy? Because I would love to take a class. I am actually working on launching my own little school, my own little academy. And I plan to do that at the end of this year or the starting next year. And I... Honestly, like I, I do feel like I we should be doing classes with other people as well. I'm doing some with Twenty One Draw this uh, this season. Uh, I'm doing two. Uh, I've done two with them. This next one is really really cool because I get to uh, teach you guys how to draw and uh, create art for uh, for mascots with like really cute animal characters and how to use those for your merchandise and merchandising and advertising and like what the purpose of learning that skill set can become financially wise and it also comes along with exercises and uh client prompts to give you like an idea of what it's like to actually do freelance work with people uh if you wanted to get like used to that uh i also will be teaching in that course how to save your artwork for prosperity and also to be able to be used in multiple platforms and to maximize the efficiency of your saved files. That way you can make multiple sources of income with one single drawing, one single project. You can possibly be creating like multiple things. So that is the course that I'm going to be teaching. Uh, so uh, you guys should be looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm also working on putting together my own book. Uh, it's going to be interesting, too. Like The process to getting that is going to get there. Sadi Mal, will you be posting on here when you start that? Yeah, of course. I, I normally just like spread out all my information from all my like social medias. So sometimes like I post on Instagram. Sometimes I post here. Mostly I just stream here uh, because it's easy for me to save the files after. Uh I normally don't post much on in, uh, on TikTok like normal post wise though. Um, I don't know. I'm like, would you guys be like interested in me posting more videos that show up on your stream, or would you guys just enjoy me having this as a streaming thing? Honestly, like either way, it's fine with me. But it's all right. Let's see. Now let's keep on going and. Let's draw the torso from a couple different positions with the same concept in mind. Okay, so this one we drew it from the right. Let's draw this one looking forward completely. So we're going to draw our rib cage. We're going to draw our underwear. So now we have a torso really quickly. Now, elements of the torso that are going to be affecting other parts of your body are going to be your collarbone. The collarbone also isn't all the way at the top. It actually cuts in front of the of the rib cage. So whenever you're actually looking at a rib cage, you're looking at this. Like the collarbone, this is the back of the neck. The collarbone kind of creates like this pocket. Okay, so it's not at the top. It's kind of like slicing off a piece of the top of the rib cage, And then from there, uh, like everything else goes down. 
Like, that's how I see it more in my head. Um, yeah, but it's it's just whenever you don't have it all the way at the top, uh, are you often drawing with pen? Would pencil be better for just a sketch? Not really. Uh, pencil's messy. This might be messy because I go over it a million times. But at the end of the day, like I have to be cleaner with my artwork and more precise in order for me to not have to erase. And when I eliminate the option of erasing, it just makes me more efficient. This is more helpful than all the tutorials I've seen on YouTube, Mr. Beast. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, okay, the real way to get better is just drawing a bunch of them quickly. Nope, 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 nope. No, 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 no. I, I disagree completely. I disagree that just drawing a lot of them at the same time is no, no, no. Yes, drawing them, the best way to get better is to draw them right? To draw your shapes. It can be relatively quickly if you want to not really think about it and make it automatic, but that has its own drawbacks, okay? The big drawback from just drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing is that you're not learning from any mistakes you make. So you're just reinforcing any bad mistakes and reinforcing any bad drawings that you're doing. So whenever you draw something, Go in, if you're learning, especially if you're learning, go in and be like, all right, so I just drew this. Let's let's look over it real quick. All right, this shape looks good. Uh, this bottom part, okay, so yeah, this bottom part looks okay too. And then you can be like, all right, that's a good drawing. Go on to this one. Ooh, I didn't have this as smooth as I would have wanted to. So just make a note, smoother line. And then this backside kind of doesn't go all the way to the edge. So just make a note of it and then just draw over it. I sound so silly to be doing that and then to tell yourself that you have to do that. But the moment that you are telling yourself, mistake, mistake, and then a corrected version of it next to it, that is the best way to accelerate the way of learning, like, period. It's not about just drawing and drawing and drawing. It's about drawing with a purpose, drawing with a need to learn, drawing with a necessity to try to learn a lesson. Uh, when we just draw for no reason, it's still good. It's still good practice. But if your purpose is to learn and get better, the other way about it is to take notes, even if it doesn't look right. Like even if you went through a whole entirely elaborate piece, put a note of it, get a post-it, put it on top, write a note. You know, like I have these around all the time, mostly because I make mistakes all the time and I draw with pen. So I often have, well, I haven't done any mistakes in a while. <laughs> but for example like i make mistakes all the time and i just correct them with my post-its uh here's another couple examples you know like stuff underneath didn't look too good so i just posted about it. like there's ways to be able to do these note things and give yourself uh, your own lesson plans you know, and you're going to be better off at the end. Uh, okay, so back to the torso anatomy. So we have our beanbag, we created our rib cage, and we created our underwear. The next things that we have to consider are the collarbone. The collarbone is an interesting piece of body because the collarbone can either go up or it can go flat. It can't go down. So whenever we have our hands normal, our collarbone is going to be in any of these ranges right here, right? And it doesn't really go past more than like a 35 to 45 degree angle. So 
this is already have a limitation of how far up or how far down you can draw it, depending on what you're going to do next. The collarbone connects to your shoulders. So the collarbone normally extends a little bit past the body. And then the shoulder actually has like a hinge point there at the top where the muscles connect. And then it goes about halfway up your collarbone to your neck or to the middle. Whee. That is why it's important to determine where the collarbone goes because it's going to move your uh, entire body either this way or that way. Now, a lot of people make the whole like flat line thing to determine which way their hips are going to go, right? A lot of people do that to get like a nice angle, but look at the reference point of where things land according to that line that you draw. So whenever you are drawing it and doing it like that, you understand that it's the tip of the uh, shoulders that's normally aligning with what lines and the sides of your hips aligning to which way the other ones are going. Okay? And all that from a beanbag. Alright, so. Beep, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's call it the Sandra Fest. Alright, so we have. And then to make the abs, it's really, really easy because you just take the bottom of the rib cage. And then just connect it to your hips, <laughs> wherever you want, and and then that's that's your abs. It's like perfectly set up. <laughs> like, can you show uh, how to do the back? Uh, I'm still trying to figure out a lot of the back, but we, we are gonna get there. We are gonna get to the back. Uh, there's little tiny things in the back that I still have not gone in and studied enough because I very rarely draw uh, any characters from the back, but I will impart the amount of knowledge that I might have. Uh, okay, so let's see. We have that. If we were drawing one of these from a perspective, a profile side, the reason that I love the beanbag shape is because it already gives you the angles of your body. The top, being the rib cage, is already angled if we do this. And the bottom already gives us the angles for our spine. So that curvature that we normally get is already straight up implemented into that shape. So you don't have to do much except for just maybe subdivide a little bit to find out where, if this was like another female, to find where shapes like breasts would end up being. Where the hips would actually go out for the legs and where everything like the booty stuff like that come out of it's normally from the hip bones now here the collarbone leads to where the shoulders would be which connects to where the breast tissue would be so maybe these would be a little bit higher because I drew the collarbone coming up And then from there, it goes on to our heads, to our jawbone, and to our necks, to our ear. And then we can build up our head according to how we see the character. The jaw is a very, very, very annoying thing to learn. 
how to draw properly. You have hoodies, they go around your character. And then from there you can just dress them however you want. So that's a very uh, quick example of how you can approach just using these for characters. Another way that you can go about this, if you didn't want to draw like super complicated things, you can draw an entire character based on that beanbag by itself. I love drawing little pandas like this, but it can be a panda, it can be any cute little animal. Just combining bean shapes after bean shapes after bean shapes. <laughs> there. I love drawing pandas. Pandas are like one of my top three animals to draw. So therefore, I developed a way to draw them from a bean bag. <laughs> There you go. How long have you been drawing for? I've been drawing for a very long time. Uh, I think my career uh, spans about 20 years since I started drawing to where I am now. Uh, I started drawing like a little later in life, though. I started drawing when I was like 18 or so. So, you know, I didn't really have a lot of experience going into it. So it took a lot of... Uh, a lot of nights having convinced myself to stay into it because uh, I felt like I was so far behind. Can you draw a hand? Well, we're not talking about hands right now. We're talking about uh, torsos. So I can answer any questions about torsos. Um, I'm just going to make a quick reference point here so that you guys know that this was a beanbag. The thing is, I'm, I plan to eventually scan all this stuff and then just print it. And then just, with along with notes and like everything. Now, that's just one thing that I plan to do at some point too. Uh, I had a couple people that came by my house and they, they saw the drawings in the sketchbook and they were like, wow, this is like, like an entire book of already about like how to draw. Like I would love this as a reference book. And well, well shit. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's try it. Uh, okay, a male versus a female torso. That's a common one. So, and again, I I, I know this is silly that I have to emphasize this, but this is not for all males and females. This is just a generalization of a body stereotype that you use for illustrative purposes. Okay? That's it. Uh, you can be female and not look like that. You can be male and not look like this. This is just a very basic generalization. So please don't, like, spam me with, like, hatred. Because I've had that happen. Okay. So, normal male... Anatomy for drawing. A normal, average, female anatomy. From a beanbag. As you can see already from the get-go, our little beanbags are going to be slightly different. If we want to make a character look more masculine, we are going to emphasize the top side of our beanbag shape. On the female one, we're going to emphasize the mid hourglass feel of it so we're going to go with 
a slightly more even or slightly even inclining to a bottom side taper. So it can be an inverse thing too. And we'll draw one over here with like an extreme for a female too. Okay. Now, as the beanbag rotates and starts being completely forward, it's not going to have these creases on the side. So just for just for illustrative like indications for yourself, just make it when you're sketching. It's going to help you out like immensely. Uh, the next step would be to identify the middle of the body and then making a notice of how the rib cage fits on each one of these guys. So on the male one, you're going to have a much larger rib cage that expands at the top, so therefore making your collarbone be super wide, bringing your shoulders out considerably, creating a big taper in your body. With the female one, you normally have a slightly smaller rib cage. And you try not to bring the collarbone out too much, reducing the size of the shoulders, Re making the character look a little bit more petite. The contrast here, though, is that when you get to the bottom part, normally with men, you don't have to give an accentuated hip bone. So you don't have to go out into the hips. Your legs can go pretty straight down from where you draw your underwear. Unless you have a lot of muscle, as a dude, you don't really have like much curves when it comes down to where your pants are. Okay? Straight down. Boom. With the female hips, though, we want to emphasize those hip bones. So if you don't understand where the hip bone like comes from, it's because your bone actually sticks out from your hips like this. And then it comes back in, creating that shape. Okay, so creating that shape, going into your kneecaps, blah, 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 blah. But that is normally what's happening whenever it's between your hips, your hip bone, and your hip, your thigh bone. That's what's creating that, you know, thickness to your, to your, the width of your hips. And that's much more emphasized on women than men. Now, you can increase the taper there. And if we do it with a character that had an even bigger differentiation, it's just going to be even more enhanced, right? And same thing with the male. If you make the upper shape much bigger, even bigger, this character is going to look massive. Right? So that is essentially the balance that you have to that you have to go around. When you don't want to have a female that has a lot of like hips or anything, you can do just slightly thinner shapes and still emphasize that hourglass shape and you can reduce the size of the hips considerably because not all women are super thick either. And if you wanted to enhance, you know, this character's appeal, you know, like they were like, you know, like, of a pinup or something like that, but they're still a little skinny, you just enhance the angles. Enhance the angles. You don't have to make the character like thicker or, you know, enhance like the size of the breast or anything like that to create those curves. 
That's just the posing that's going to get you there. Okay? So that is where the appeal comes from. It doesn't come from the size of the, like, the features. It comes from the posing and how you... The motion of the ocean. <laughs> uh, let's see. So that is the differentiation between that. Any other questions, guys? I'm going to take a quick sip of draw water. I'll be right back. But I would love for you guys to just uh, post any questions you guys want. I'll scroll up in a second. Uh, just give me a sec. By the way, talking for a considerable amount of time uh, has become something of a hobby. <laughs> it seems like I'm pretty good at it. Oh, okay, yeah, we got to go over the backs. Hmm. All right, let's do backs. All right, so if we have a torso from the front, bean bag, right? Bean bag. And then we have that same torso from the back. We're going to just make like a quick correlation turnaround and then you're just going to figure it out ourselves. Uh, I haven't done this one like in a long time, so we'll see how, we'll see how it comes out. The first part is to identify a rib cage from the front, right? And that's where our crease goes in the bean bag. From the back, you get a little bit less of a denture than the front. So we're going to make it a little bit different, just a little bit wider, because we have our spine that goes down, so it's kind of relevant in the back. Now, the next step that we have is our underwear line. Boom, boom. Our underwear line is going to go right here and going to go to the front. We're going to emphasize the back. Next step is our spine. We're just going to connect to our seventh vertebrae up and on top of our rib cage. And if you guys are wondering where that point is, just reach to the back of your neck, go down your neck, and you'll feel a big bumpy part. That bumpy part is what I refer to as the top of the ribcage. Okay, that's the seventh or eighth vertebrae or something like that uh, in our ribcage. So uh, that's what I refer to. That same point on the front would be right there. The spine would be in the back. Then the next point would be the collarbone. Collarbone. We're going to make it right there. The collarbone from this side will be right there. And then we're going to go with a baseball diamond approach uh, that I... Oh my god, I forgot. I am on Imagine Effects and I my, my article came out about how to draw necks. And then that's awesome. So I'm going to say like, uh, go look it up. But it's a baseball diamond approach to this section. Uh, you have home base being the middle of your collarbone, first base being, and third base being where your arms are going to go. And then the back of your neck is essentially third base. So we're going to approach it like that. And then from here, uh, I explain how to connect everything, like the next muscles and stuff like that. But that's not the purpose of this. Uh, I just got really excited because I forgot, and I just got my magazine in the mail, and I can't believe it. It feels so good, and I giggled, and, and I almost cried a little, honestly. Like, that was like a life goal accomplishment. Like, I've always wanted to be published in that, and and they still want to publish my sketchbook too, like another section, uh, possibly uh, next month or uh, in a couple months from now. But whoo, Jesus. Okay, uh, let's continue. All right, so 
from here, then we can determine where our shoulders are going to go. So we're going to determine our shoulders. They go from the middle of our collarbone to the back. And they kind of do the same thing in the back as well. So we're just going to mark it like that. Okay, they overlap a little bit into the back like that. Then the next step in the front is to determine what the pectoral muscles are. Now the shoulders are first, then the shoulders muscles let our pectoral muscles come in from about halfway or about like the beginning of the shoulder, honestly, like around this area. As long as it comes from underneath, just... That should be fine. Then you have your pectoral muscles. From this side, maybe you would see them a little bit because they're so big on the character. So, there. Now you have your arm. Your arm goes underneath your shoulder and your pectoral muscle, and it comes out of that little intersection. Your bicep comes out of there. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. Only this time we're seeing it from behind, so we're going to see our uh, triceps into our elbow. Yeah, that's what we'll it. Okay, the back is more of a shape like this, and then the front is more of a shape like a little teardrop. A teardrop into a scarab, or whatever you want to call it. On our shoulders. Then the next step is our lat muscles. So any muscles that would be in our back, which are you know our lat muscles, connect from the back of our like shoulders, and they go and they connect to the bottom of our ribcage. Okay, so we're going to do it on both sides. In this case, the ribcage, I angled it up, so that's why it's looking weird. So I'm going to angle it up. There go. All right, the next step is to figure out where the bottom part are. So our pectoral muscles, first of all, in the, in the front, they kind of connect in the middle, but they're kind of like two little boxes that just like tear each other from like the angles so the fibers from your muscle come from here and then they come in and they rip like that and then they rip in like this that's why you get like the little cleavage in the middle okay that's that's where you get that little think about it like that when you want to draw somebody that's really buff and then they connect to the collarbone and again it comes out like this so then you end up with a shape like that. Then the next thing is you have your rib cage, which is this, and then you have muscles right in there. So like we determined from the bottom of this to somewhere on the hips, we're going to have our abs. So we're gonna start dividing this into our ab muscles. Our ab muscles, come in all different shapes and sizes. Some people have like a six pack. Some people have a 16 pack. Your muscles just tear a little bit different, but they generalize in a pattern like this. Then from here, we're going to have the little squishy part of like, I don't know what those muscles are, like, where our love handles are. Like, I just don't know what they're called. And then you go into our underwear line, which is our hip, which is why we would have the bone sticking out a little bit. This is also the V line for men. The hips is where it creates that little V shape that everybody covets. That's your hips. That's your hip bone. 
If you can see that you're too skinny, go eat a taco. <laughs> and you might look good, but you might be you might be hungry, so go eat a taco. Okay? Uh, this area right here is a little bit big in comparison to what I would normally draw, so I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. Give him another set of packs. There you go. That's a little more like it. No sucking tune. And this is where you get the little ribbity parts that are essentially just your skin hugging your rib cage. Think about it like that. Your rib cage is going around, has depth, and then chook, 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 chook. That's all you have to draw. Okay. <laughs> It'll 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 save you like so much annoying like detail work that you have to like remember. Okay, so now that we have all the front, we're gonna go on to the back. So in the back, we have a couple muscles. Uh, this the going from second, first, and third base is going to give you your trap muscles. I think that's yeah, the trap muscles, the ones that are going in the head. These are the ones that connect to the neck, and they connect to your skull. All right? These are the ones that connect up here to your head. So now from here, you have a couple different ways that you can go about it. I personally like going and creating like, it's this shape right here. It's like a little uh, halo sword. That's, or like a ninja star that connects your trap muscles. And then it comes in back to where your spine is and it divides your back like this. Now, the reason that I do it like that is because that gives me a really quick way to mask out the muscle structures that I know. So you get the little wingy parts of your arms that connect to the back of your elbows or to your shoulders as well. And then from here, from the bottom of these, you connect these to your butt dimple, which is just the back of your underwear line. And then from here, you have your top butt <laughs> and your normal butt. Uh, yes, we have... Uh, upper gluteus max uh, gluteus maximus and gluteus minimus. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, the gluteus maximus is the big booty, and then the little tiny like indent that we get on top in the back is the other booty. Yeah, this is not as refined as the front studies for me. And then you just create the dimples in the back for the spine, the rib cage, and then you have a pretty uh, interesting, easy way to map out the back. Very similar to the front, honestly. It's just because they're following the same reference points, but it just all depends on how you end up uh, drawing it. There's also a diamond part here where all the muscles like, you know, intersect and connect. And then that's like that little point on top of your like, that's where it like sticks out from. But that's a little bit more advanced and probably not necessarily worth drawing. But uh, now it looks like a cool ninja star. So that's cool. Uh, let's see. Draw a girl with big gluteus maximus. Okay. That's not a, a weird request when it comes down to a, a pinup uh, uh, structures of the body. It would be more with a downside, like heavy body. So the rib cage would be little. The hip bones would be big. And then you just draw a gigantic booty. Because you already know where your legs are going to come out of.
And then from there, if you wanted it bigger, you just go and make it bigger. Because you already have the structure. You can make it as big as you want. <laughs> you already have your base structure. So make the booty as like bootylicious as you feel like it. <laughs> no. I just enjoy drawing. Like I can draw men incredibly easy. Men are easy. Men are very easy to draw, like stupidly easy, because there's no like curvature to it. So you can draw men very easy. There's no real science to me to drawing men. I started drawing mostly because I wanted to journal my life. So I drew myself quite a bit. And I still draw myself quite a bit. So drawing men has never been an issue for me. It's drawing, uh, I've always just been more focused on drawing appealing female shapes because I've always wanted to be known for my uh, drawings of pinups. That's why I got into art <laughs> because of people like Frank Cho and people like Scott Campbell. That's the reason that I started. Can I draw feet? Yes, I can, but we were talking about torsos. So we're not going to be drawing anything that's not around the realm of torsos. Uh, let's see. Good exercises that you can do to learn how to draw bodies better is to draw these bean bags or simple shapes once you get past the whole having to be a bean bag shape. And then start figuring out how to make bodies from them. Little by little, you're going to start accumulating different posings and different like ways of drawing bodies. And it's going to help you immensely. If you, especially if you're trying to be like a character designer or uh, anything with uh, variations of characters in mind, which is a very popular thing that a lot of people want to be. So that's a very... You asked the question, what's a three further point of view can you explain drawing a torso in three quarters uh, okay so if you want to do something in three quarters it's you just draw the character in three quarters you make the bean bag you make a three quarter view and that's it From there, you just add whatever you want to do to your character. Stylize it after that if you want to. And just edit it like it's your sketch, so there's no like definites already. You can go in and change it however you feel. You already know your shoulders here, so you know your arm is supposed to be here. This one's over here. So maybe he's going to be like an archer or something. I don't know. 
could be whatever. But little tiny like exercises like this help you understand the shapes very, very quick. How do I do hands in there? I'm not drawing hands today. Nah, the dev, the dude, did you go to college for art? Yes, I went to school for animation, but I went to school for 3D animation. They didn't really teach us much uh, drawing per se. Uh, we did have a couple of like life drawing classes, but not having a very, even a basic understanding of what I was supposed to be drawing uh, kind of resulted in me not being able to get what I needed from them. So even towards the end of my four-year college spree, uh, I was still a really, really terrible artist. I just didn't know how to draw, like, because no one really taught me how to do it. So I ended up seeking, you know, like, the advice of other people that I knew. I started taking up caricature jobs so I would have to force myself to draw. And then it just ended up being something that I was passionately, like, like avid about. And then I just found out, like, you know, in recent years that I'm pretty damn good at teaching. <laughs> uh, so I've been trying to pursue a little bit more of that now. Doo -doo -doo. I love the way you teach. I have 21 drawn. It's pretty good. And I see you YouTube. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Twelve dot art. Do you have easy, relaxed teaching method? Which is, oh, well, thank you. Uh, if you wanted to get a little bit more stylized, you can always just start playing around with different proportions, different lines. Go like really boxy if you want to do like robots, you know. But you have all the elements right there. Already mapped out the same way. Underwear ribcage. But now it's going to be a robot. It's a very easy, fun, simple way of mapping it out. Uh, I hope that it actually helps some of you, though, because coming up with these little tiny like tips and tricks to figure out how to do it really easy and quickly uh, took forever to be able to do properly for me. And even super dynamic poses, you know, it's... It just fits so well. It's chasing whatever. Kind of looks like he wants the Krabby Patty secret formula. By the way, your art is amazing. <laughs> You know, like at one point, I want to make it so people have less of a hard time figuring out how to draw things, and then they can spend more time actually drawing it, creating it. Because so many of us are like so limited by the experience and the knowledge and the ability and the funding to get to that level of understanding. And I hate that. Uh, I hate that people like struggle and they put themselves, uh, you know, financially in debt to try to pursue their dream and then only to have like a straight up mediocre experience. And then that ruins your ability or your drive to want to be an artist, period. Because now you are like hurt, essentially. So. 
to those people, that is why I do what I do. Because I saw way too many of my colleagues go to college, end up in debt, and never even get a chance to work on anything. Because they were taught horribly. Because we weren't taught how to survive. We weren't taught how to make our money from what we did. We were taught how to be employees. And when the market was not hiring you because uh, you weren't educated properly, well, then that becomes a problem. Because then student loans come to knocking. And it's just, uh, it was a bad experience for a lot of my friends. So I try not to... uh, to make sure that people get the education they need without requiring them to like fork over their money. <laughs> well, hey there. What are we drawing today? Well, today we talked a lot about torsos. So this video is going to be on YouTube later on tonight. So uh, keep an eye out for that then. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to explain a little bit about putting the practices of what we were just talking about into play. Collarbone leads to our shoulders. That leads to where our head would be. And adjust if necessary, if it looks weird. You can come up with a lot of fun things without even really requiring much perspective or a lot of anatomy. Like, because you don't really like you need to understand what the anatomy you're drawing, but you gotta also be able to uh break free of the limitations that it has, so you have to be able to adjust and like especially if you're gonna be a cartoonist, woo, you have to understand that it's everything's flexible, everything's flexible. <laughs> Can you draw a small frog real quick? I will draw a small frog just to show that a frog still also has anatomy. Uh, but depends on how I draw the little frog. I'm going to draw a little Pac-Man frog because I love those things. And they look like Bulbasaur. And they eat mice. And I, I hate mice. And they have little splotches. And they bury themselves in the ground. <laughs> nah. There you go. What's your YouTube called? Well, you see this name right up here? Rod Gun. Well, if you go in and type in Rod Gun or Rod Gun the Artist. If you want to be more precise, uh, you'll end up with uh, about 200 videos that will uh, help you. <laughs> uh, you will also be able to go to my Instagram, and that has like over like 5,000 posts that are meant to help people. And just to walk you guys through what the life is of a normal person that does art for a living. All right. So I think with that, we have filled up the entire page. So... We are going to be calling it a day after we recap a little bit. We talked a little bit today about torsos and how to start working with them and making them a part of your normal routine because you can use them for humans, you can use them for animals, you can use them for a lot of different things. Then we talked a little bit about how to communicate the parts of the body and to correlate those to the other parts that are going to be moving. That's why it's important to draw the torso first before you start drawing the rest of your body because that is going to determine where everything else goes. Uh, When is my next live? I'm going to try to aim to do these from either 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning uh, Pacific time. That's going to be the goal for this coming week. And then if I can maintain that, then we will continue like that for a while. Uh, Eventually... When I get off my lazy ass, I'm going to be going and doing them on Twitch. And I'll start my channel there again. And then that'll be a dedicated place for people to be like able to watch me do my freelance work too. 
you know, so people can just tune in and learn how to do something new, like whenever I get a project. And that's going to be like the thing. Uh, the sketchbook that I'm using are the Neek sketchbooks. Uh, if you, I believe it's Rodgon 15, gets you 15% off. Uh, you can contact them directly and tell them that Rodgon sent you, and then they'll probably send you a discount code. So uh, they're lovely sketchbooks. They're amazing, especially if you use ink and watercolor. They hold everything perfectly. Like we were talking about animals that day. But, yeah, have I done a video on hands? Oh, my dear Lord. Uh, I have several, actually. Uh, so all you got to do is just go look through my Instagram or look through – yeah, look, go look through my Instagram until you find the drawing of hands. And then just follow the link there to the, to the YouTube. But, yeah, we've drawn – we've talked about every body part. Every single body part, uh, multiple times over. Uh, heads have been specially, specially done. Uh, facial expressions, even line quality, like like how something with clean lines and sketchy lines and how that works. Uh, but yeah, we've talked about hands in multiple occasions. I think this one was about hands, showing like the differences between simple and bad and different ways to do them. But yeah, tons to learn, tons, tons to learn. So, you know, feel free to go look them up. Uh, yeah, the, just enjoy. Hope you guys liked it. If you guys missed this, it's going to be on YouTube later. Um, yeah, no need to support me, except if you guys do subscribe to my stuff, that's all I could possibly ask for. So get me to that 100,000 YouTube subscriber list and I will adore you guys so much because I just want that plaque just just for another achievement. I want that for uh, – it's going to go next to my Imagine Effects thing. So I just want that fucking plaque. <laughs> All right. So if you guys could do that, that would be amazing. If not, don't worry about it. Just learn as much as you can from me before I don't post things anymore because I will not have subscribers. So I will just go and die. So I will love you guys until then, and I'll see you guys next time.